Let's all step into the Opie and Anthony time machine so we can go see Patrice O'Neill at uh, at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Gotta love the promos that play uh, for dates that are that are gone. Yeah, we'll, we'll acknowledge someone effed up on that one. I uh, got a couple of emails, instant feedbacks actually. Okay. About the uh, post headlines, a couple of people had their favorite when uh, Yasser Arafat died. It said the Arafat lady sings. <laughs> Quite a sense of humor. And, and my all-time favorite was uh, Fred Astaire dying. And it said, a stair way to heaven. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's not play on words. Well, we're looking for funny. Yeah, that's pretty funny because you get, it's really just n- no class is what it is. It's so New York Post. A stair way to heaven. They use his name, a stair way to heaven. Give the guy a little more respect than that. Yeah. Your mic is all weird today, bro. Is it? Yeah, I got. I, I, I'm out of it now too. It's word. It's word. That's word. Wait, now try it. Hello. Ooh, if I turn I'm at off, a porty. What? If I, if I turn off Ben's mic, here, just move that mic away. Move it away. Oh, look at us. There you figuring go. Figuring out the new studio. What? Now, that sounds better. Yeah, now it sounds perfect. Hey, how about that? How do I sound? Uh, now it sounds perfect. It sounds good. No, I know on the air it sounds good. Fine, ben. on the air. I know I know it doesn't sound right to you guys, but on the air it sounds really good. Let me try this now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it has to sound uh, good for us in our headphones so we're not distracted bitching and complaining so we could actually do radio f- for once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just want to hear what this... This one sounds much better in my headphones than this one does. Than your own mic. All this right. one sounds great. Ben yeah. sounds great. All right, move over there and just use that mic. <laughs> and this sounds... You dropped something. Like I'm underwater. <laughs> you dropped something. All right. No, 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 no. No, don't don't take yourself out of the game again. Grab that mic. I'm not. Grab that I mic. I want to sit over there. I want to sit here. Yeah, that's his spot. It All right, then weird. just stay there. Eric, he's not using that mic. Just throw no. it over there. No. No, that mic's oh. off. Oh. Ah! It sounds better on that one. It shouldn't, but it does. No, you sound fine. But it, to me, I sound underwater. Well, they mm-hmm. purposely did that because it's not about you. I know, but it's still, I just don't want to sound like I'm drowning. I, 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 sh- I went into a take a leak yeah. during the break, and I go into one of the stall areas, and um, Jimmy is in the stall area next to me. He walks in there, and I hear him go, Psst. you know, he does his little things. <laughs> yeah. So I'm taking a leak, and of course I'm looking down at the toilet bowl in front of me as I take a leak, and he, Jimmy starts talking, and all of a sudden this... Yellow stream starts hitting the floor right by the toilet. <laughs> he didn't do he's, that again. He's leaking. Dude. He's pissing from underneath. He's pissing into my stall. And just starts laughing like an idiot. Dude, as I see this yellow stream going down. You do realize someone has to clean up this You're crap. You're like a dog. <laughs> someone has to clean this up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's their job. Jimmy makes the jokes. Other people Are you trying to, to say they up. should have done better in high school? No, oh, why not? Maybe they can come in here and fix this. All right, let's say hi to Peter in New Jersey. Peter, what's up? What's up, guys? Hey. Best, best headline of all time was probably close to 10 years ago at this point. Okay. But it was that whole Tanya Harding scandal when they, uh, when they pretty much pinpointed her and it said, Bodyguard Fingers Tanya. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> all right, thank you, buddy. Uh, another yeah, post headline, when uh, Bush's daughter got, uh, daughters got busted for underage drinking, uh, Jenna and Tonic. Ooh, that's a little rough. Yeah. That's a little rough. Pat from Anarchy right in the headline. All right, here's the deal. So uh, the New York Post Saturday, the headline, Brooklyn bigot arrested for mocking midget family. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to court he goes. The picture is of uh, a mother and a daughter. Uh huh. Let's start with that. No, it isn't, first of all. Huh? It's not of a mother and daughter. No? It's of a, a freak show. That is calling themselves a mother and a daughter. Well, the mother, the mother looks relatively normal, except for the fact that she is a midget. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because she's sitting down and stuff. You can't really tell how short she really is and mm-hmm. all. And she's wearing a big puffy coat. You know what I mean? She doesn't yeah. really look like a midget. How she's uh, sitting there, but her daughter standing up with her little little midget arms around her neck. Oh, she's got like they're taking a a portrait type of picture with the mother sitting, the daughter standing behind her right. and has those those little cocktail frank yeah. fingers on her mother's shoulder. And she's got a uh, a wild afro, a white he- headband on and uh wearing a jersey. I think she's uh, half black, Anthony. She's half yep. black. She's got some kind of NBA jersey on. It might be Seattle. Mhm. Seattle jersey kind of kind of dressing uh, I don't know. A little bit like the homeboys would dress. Yeah, a little in the ghetto. hood, right? 
And uh, they're very depressed, obviously, because they've been getting harassed by this uh, this bigot in Brooklyn. You got the guy's name? Uh, yeah, I got to get to that. So here we go. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off the court. He goes. A family of midgets in Brooklyn were mercilessly mocked by their neighbor, who painted a yellow brick road in front of their house and sang, "Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to work we go." As they walk. <laughs> He actually took the time and trouble <laughs> to get paint and paint a yellow brick road. Yeah. Oh my God. From their front door, I guess. Motivated. From their front door down the sidewalk away. They went past five houses. <laughs> this guy didn't just do the joke no. to the curb. Five uh, houses. Five houses. Where is this guy? We got to hire him for the radio. Do you know show. how many times you have to go? And yeah. shake it oh. and back up and make sure you're not tripping. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show those. Show those. Make <laughs> this guy. This guy was motivated. Highly motivated. Uh, Joseph Izzo. Izzo. I Z Z O. Izzo. Izzo. I figures. Joseph Izzo. He's an Italian guy, right? Was arrested hey, after Joe Izzo. He was arrested after a three-week campaign of abuse against his neighbors. Three foot eight, Deborah Shea and her three foot six daughter, Concilian. What? Pegas. What? Her name is Concilian. C O N S C E L E A N. Close enough. Wow, I've never heard of that name. Yeah. He was charged with menacing, stalking, and aggravated harassment. Five houses he painted this yellow. <laughs> Okay, terrific. Yeah, okay, terrific. All right. <laughs> I actually think that if you're abusing and hassling midgets, it should only be a misdemeanor. <laughs> the visual is just hilarious. <laughs> They're walking out of their house just trying to make a damn living like everyone else. But they have yeah. to deal with their shortness. <laughs> they, got deal this, with... they got this idiot fucking singing this. <laughs> out his out screen. Out his, out his kitchen window screen. Yeah. Hey, you fucking midget, huh? <laughs> hey, midget. Uh, Joe Izzo. Joe Izzo. Let's uh, continue with the story, Anthony. The Yellow Brick Road ended in court after a Brooklyn man allegedly harassed a midget mother and her equally diminutive daughter, mocking them relentlessly, relentlessly with chants like, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. Joseph Izzo's campaign of hate uh, culminated with his arrest Thursday after he spray-painted <laughs> a young... <laughs> That's classic, man. How do you not see the humor in this? Hilarious. Uh, after he spray painted a yellow line outside the Brighton Beach home, uh, before telling them to follow the yellow brick road, according to court documents. Oh my God! Izzo 40 had been taunting the pair for about three weeks, leading them to call the cops. Shay said she and Izzo, who stands five foot eight, have known each other for 30 years. Get out of here! They've been neighbors that long? Yeah, the guy has known the Midget family for 30 years, Anthony. He probably never noticed them before. He just looked down one day. Oh hey, my what God. the who the? <laughs> and would regularly hang out and have dinner together. Really? But about three weeks ago, Izzo just bugged out, she said. I bet she's on medication of some sort. It's some kind of a medication. La yeah, of course. Maybe his tooth hurt and he was uh, on Vicodin. <laughs> They'd have dinner, they'd order mushrooms, he'd eat one, she'd sit under it. <laughs> so he just started bugging out three three weeks ago after mm -hmm. knowing the family for 30 years. Shay, which is the mother, I guess, uh, yeah. first called police to her house on April 5th, claiming Izzo walked up to the 16-year-old daughter, whose father is black, and told her, you low-life nigger, you better watch your back. Jeez. He went on to call her a little bitch before threatening, I'm going to kill you, according to court documents. He sang, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go, like <laughs> like we're dwarfs, not human beings, Shay told, uh, wow. told the Post yesterday. Well, you know what it was? When, he, when, he, when they heard hi-ho, they thought the father was just home from work again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Izzo was not arrested after that incident, but he was collared on work? Thursday... I know. Two days after he allegedly... <laughs> Good point. Just walking in from a night of criminal mischief. Delivering pizza. 
Izzo was not arrested after that incident, but he was collared on Thursday, two days after he allegedly used yellow spray paint to draw a line from the front of their mm -hmm. house out into the street, and it extended it, and he extended the yellow uh, line five houses down the block. Boompa, boompa, doompa dee dee. If you are wise, you listen to me. When Awful it, little hands. When Izzo saw Shay, <laughs> chocolate. he allegedly told her to follow the yellow brick road. Uh, the song sung by the Munchkins in the classic, The Wizard of Oz. You know, they actually explain that in the paper? I know. Isn't yeah. that great that they yeah. have to explain that? Yeah, exactly. Follow the yellow brick road. The criminal complaint oh, said, <laughs> said Izzo went on to call her a welfare bitch before yelling, Look at the midgets. They're bringing in the fucking niggers here. Oh, here, Jesus. Here comes the circus. This guy just lost his mind. The guy's blaming the midgets for bringing the blacks into the neighborhood? Yeah. For really... Saw that whole accusation thing going, but Iz Izzo was slapped with two counts of menacing, stalking, and aggravated har harassment as a hate crime. Ah, when you get that hate crime, it's over, Johnny. No one gets acquitted of those. I gotta say, when you start spray painting in front of people's houses, there's a problem. Yeah. You know, if you just want to, like, you know, make remarks, or maybe put, you know, lit dog shit in their mailbox. Hey, midget! <laughs> Scream that over the fence. <laughs> yeah, midget! A couple other things here. The daughter, a junior at Lincoln, uh, Lincoln High School, admitted the brutal barbs hurt, but said there was nothing she could do about it. Yeah. Realistic. <laughs> That's why she has the afro, is that she just wants to be taller somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when they measure her, she tells them not to crush the fro. Add another couple couple inches on that. How tall are they up? Three foot something? Three foot uh, eight and three foot six. So Those the, are real midges. So the afro yeah. makes her probably about four foot tall. I mean, four foot two is tall, but three foot six. Three six. Ooh. It hurts, but I know I, I could deal with it, she said. I just ignore it, but every day it just hurts. That must have been a real drunken night of Colt 45 for that yeah. brother to hit that. Well, night. he's a midget, too, I think. Is it? I don't know. Is the black father a midget? Dude. You don't have to be. Dude, it's a black father. We don't know where he is. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, something tells me he was a midget. I'm not sure why. Yeah? It, yeah. There's no sign of uh, the father in this article, so I don't know what's going on Well, would that. you stick around if you were him, if you knocked up that awful woman? She I looks like William that. Frawley in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Let's yeah. see. Uh, her mother feels betrayed by the attacks. People are mean, but I've never been harassed like this. He was my friend. Despite the hurt, she wants to move on. Just let's get along and let's be happy, she said. There was actually... Um... Oh, shit. What? I completely... Wow. Lost my thought. Mm. I had like a, a, a real... The... Had a real thought there, ready to come Whoa. out. You, it, oh, and right before it came out. Oh, just lost it. Oh, my God. It went away. I hate that. Oh, it's the worst. Well, Anthony, there's a follow-up to the story that was in uh, the Post yesterday. Thank goodness. Ooh. Clown blasts a bozo. Nice headline. Okay. Midget Kin rips bigot. Coco, the killer clown, has spoken out on the bias incident reported in yesterday's Post. Thank God. Coco, I've the killer clown. I've been waiting for Coco's statement. What, who is Coco, the killer clown? Well, we're going to find out in a second here. Okay. You ready for this? Uh-huh. Here's the post trying to be funny and wacky again. All right. This article starts with Tears of a Clown. Oh, I get it. That's the song beep, title. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, there it is. Wacky. Tears of a Clown were flowing yesterday as a famed Brooklyn Circus performer reacted with disgust to charges that a once-friendly neighbor mocked his midget mom and sister about their diminutive stature. Yeah? How about that? Sorry. Coco, the killer clown who for five years was a midget fixture at Coney Island sideshows by the seashore, oh came out swinging at Joseph Izzo, the Brooklyn bigot now facing charges of harassment, stalking, and menacing for terrorizing Coco's family. Killer clown versus the Brooklyn bigot. <laughs> That's a nice wrestling match. I didn't know that uh, Coco the Killer Clown was related to the two that were being harassed. Who knows? Here on, on Coney Island. He's, uh, he's the famous one in the family, Anthony. If any place, if any place on the surface of this globe needed a tsunami, it's Coney Island. Please, God. Oh, imagine seeing the top of that big Ferris wheel just poking out from under some water. 
knowing that that whole area has just been cleansed of the freaks, degenerates, and criminals that are there. I think the last time that place was was fun and festive was in like black and white films of the people in suits spinning on those things or the horse jumping into the big bucket. They used to walk a lot faster back then too, I noticed. For some reason they all move fast. I don't get that, but... They'd I... walk down the boardwalk fast, eat their ice cream cone in fast it, motion. It was really strange how they used to walk yeah. around Go to the back beach in the old those days. One piece things for the men over the shoulders, the do stripes. You, do you think they really uh, saw color back then? No, everything was actually in black and white. We've had colored films for many, many years, but uh, things were actually just in black and white. The well, when the they show the old footage of... off the stuff, uh, it was just black and white. So, the, yeah, like... they show the old footage of Coney Island and everything yeah. was in black and white? Oh, yeah, that's all authentic. So uh... when did people start seeing in color, you think? Uh, it was sort of around World War II. Yeah? Something the Germans did to the sun that made it uh, actually start reflecting uh, colors here on Earth. Yeah. It's amazing. Who was, who was the brainiac that finally decided that women don't need to wear dresses to go swimming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was the good old days. They actually wear, like, skirts <laughs> and I love, tops. I love old footage of hats. people hanging out at the beach. Coney Island. Because, you know, the temperature didn't change much. And you've all, everyone's been at the beach when it's like 100 degrees. And these stupid women had to, had to go swimming in dresses. It's a wonderful day here at Coney Island. And... Hey, girls, you, boy, you can't see a gas anywhere. Where are the thong bikinis? You had to have a really nice imagination back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. And they'd, like, they'd just go in up to the bottom of their skirt. Yeah. And they'd be holding, like, a parasol. Yeah. And uh, have a big hat with flowers and birds on it. Can you imagine living back then and you see a, you see a face at the beach mm -hmm. and she's wearing one of these long flowing dresses to go swimming? Yeah. And you really have no idea what her body was going to look Ooh. like when you got it home. I run so, uh, rub some uh, sunblock on your nose. Right. It could have been. That's all that was. Uh, it could have been a really. Oh, it could have been a nice. <laughs> it could have been a nice surprise or a very, very, very big disappointment Ooh. when you got him back home to your crib. Much like the rapist walking into your room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> nice surprise or awful. Really don't know what you're gonna Run. get when you take off the bathing suit dress. That's a big thing. Well, the guys had to wear those wacky ones too, where it was the straps over the shoulders, one piece. It had to be had striped. Stripes. Yeah, it had to be striped and for some reason. And you had the big Raleigh Fingers mustache going. You think they kicked you off the beach if you didn't have that crazy mustache and the striped bathing suit? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, and you had to carry big barbells with you with big uh, circular weights, big oh. spherical weights on the end of it. hundred got the chicks. Yeah, with 100 whoops <laughs> written on it. <laughs> I'm such a downer. i got to bring back a memory. Remember, we used to eat at the Brooklyn Diner a lot uh -huh. after our our other show? Yeah. Or before our other show there? I like the Brooklyn Diner. I That's just don't like the me. prices. And, and I've never a... paid $35 for a chicken pot pie in my life. And then there's a, there's a, a wall. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole wall is a picture of Coney Island. Coney it, Island, back in the day. It had to be, what what year? Like 1920-something? Probably, yeah, 20s. It, tops, right? Yeah. I think it was even uh, before then. And everyone's really happy, and you see all sorts of people. Like it had to be hundreds of thousands of people. It must have been some big thing they were doing down there. Yeah, on the beach. And I look at Anthony, and I go, Anthony, what do all those people now have in common? Oh boy, they're all dead. <laughs> but then there was a little kid up yeah. front that might still be. You know, yeah. Then we had hope for the home. We somewhere. had hope for that one little kid. <laughs> that one little kid. We're like, well. Drooling in a nursing home yeah. somewhere, remembering Coney Island. Because yeah, then Anthony's challenging me on my theory. He's like, "Well, look at that little boy right there. He could be he could be eighty six years old now, He's still alive." Up on Daddy's shoulders in the picture. <laughs> right. Yeah, could yeah. be there. I remember Coney Island. Yeah, in the no, end, no, I don't. In the end, kids' life just sucks. Yeah, that was it? <laughs> and then we're also looking through, thinking, how many of these guys like just. Or this kid over here croaked on the beaches of Normandy or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, the wars and... Of course. Oh, just awful. Great, right. nice, nice picture. It's supposed to be a real picker-upper. It's a big 4th of July party, Coney Island, from uh, the 20s or maybe even early 30s. I'm, I'm not sure what it was, but it's supposed to be like a fun thing. Mm -hmm. And there's me and Opie, we're fired from our job, so we're just sitting there depressed looking at it, making it the worst picture ever. <laughs> yeah. We can't even find fun out of it. Like, well, those people really look like they're enjoying themselves. No, they're all dead now. Yeah. That young kid is in a home. That guy probably lost his leg at Anzio. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there was a fat lady, I remember, with her swimming dress on. Like, yeah. oh, man, you know, the medical 
crap they had back then. Oh, this please. lady probably dropped out of a massive heart attack. Oh, of course. Only a couple of years after this picture oh. was taken. Tops. After they put leeches on her to cure her. Archaic <laughs> crap. All right, back to Coco the Killer Clown, Anthony. Well, that's where we were. So Coco the Killer Clown is another member of this family that was uh, being mocked. But he's not being mocked because he's... Uh, He's a big star in the family. I don't understand it. He's been a family friend for years, said Coco. Uh, I don't know how he could do this to my mom and my sister. It's like a kick in the ass, said Coco, currently on hiatus from performing after undergoing back surgery. When I come to New York, I'd like to have a talk with him, he hey, said. Hey, he's going to show him. But despite his homicidal, homicidal stage name, Coco insisted he would never use his four foot three, 160-pound frame to inflict punishment on this guy. 160? Four foot three, 160. Wow. What's I weigh about built? 165. Is he built? Uh, I don't I doubt it. Or just fat? I would have to say... Uh, and why is he a killer I would clown? have to say a lot of the weight's in his butt. A you lot think? of weight in his butt. They his keep butt. that low center of gravity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Midgets don't have a lot of weight in their uh, no. in their arms and, and legs for the most part. No, because they're short. Yeah, so it's probably gut and butt. Oof. Uh, I would help anybody, but not hurt anybody, he said. The trouble between Coco's mom and sister... And Izzo began roughly three weeks ago when the 40-year-old former friend spread rat poison on the street, according to Shay. Uh, Shay objected, and her pleas were met with a three-week barrage of insults. Why did he spread rat poison? Oh, just I guess there was probably a rat Rats. rat oh. problem in the neighborhood, so he's, uh, I guess, doing the neighborly thing. Oh. <laughs> he decides to just spread rat poisoning all over the streets. I'm sure there's kids playing, so it's probably not the best idea. So the midget mouthed off to him. Yeah, the midget right. mother's like, what the F are you doing? And then uh, this guy decided to abuse uh, the family for mm -hmm. the next three weeks. Was she afraid her mongrel daughter was going to pick them up and eat them? <laughs> And both races will be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much it, I guess. Coco was so baffled by Izzo's behavior. Use the rats for transportation. Yeah, that's about it. Killer clown is bad. Wow, that's a whole family of midgets, huh? Yeah. Is like the father a midget too? Chance? Still no sign of the father. I guess one of these, you know, it's like a 50-50 shot. If you have a, a fidget, then you got a normal-sized person, and they uh, have sex, and the woman gets pregnant, you got a 50-50 shot of it being normal-sized person or a midget. How do you know that, Anthony? I just picked it up somewhere. Forget Aristotle and fuck Socrates. Here comes Professor Anthony. Yeah, I saw it on a special on the HBO, the midget special. Uh, yeah, I got a 50-50 shot. The doctor. Do you know if you... Yeah, the doctor. The doctor, uh, there was a doctor, midget doctor, and uh, he was married to a normal-sized woman. And she got pregnant, and they were wondering, you know, 50-50 shot, wonder if it's going to come out normal size or have to go through the hell that the midget went through. Nice selfish parents, right? You got a 50-50 shot of having a midget. You pretty much don't have kids. And uh, they tested, and the kid came out, and fidget. It had to be a midget. midget. That whole 50-50 thing with the midget, no way. I don't believe it at you all. You think it's just always, always? I think it's uh, mostly midget. But you know what the thing has got to be? When that kid popped out in the delivery room, you know the mother was like, you motherfucker. You son of a bitch. You and your... Awful DNA. I gotta deal with you, and now I got a kid. And he probably wouldn't make eye contact with her, like, look, our baby, but yeah. we all know who to blame is. Mm. There's no one else you could blame. Yep. Oh. I, know, I know a little something about genetics, Anthony. As long as it's got ten cocktail francs, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm <gonna tell> <laughs> yeah, counting the cocktail fr <laughs> frank fingers. <laughs> ten Manx cattail fingers. <laughs> ah, ah, little numbs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know a little something about uh, genetics. You do? Yeah, if you have blue eyes and your wife has blue eyes, uh -huh. the kid's going to have blue eyes. Right. Thank you. It's not always true, though, Opie. Oh, no, that one's true. No. Oh, yes, it is. Cigars and Scotch from Whackbag.com. Hey, I have a working theory on this. I think... Even, even if the guy was on medication for 30 years, you don't just wig out like that. I think he had a midget fetish. Maybe watched, like, Bridges the Mid Midget videos and thought... You know, I'm going to try that. Hits Hunter, gets rejected, and can you imagine the humiliation and the shame? Of being rejected sexually by a midget? Yeah. Well, that's the problem is this guy, if a midget rejects you sexually, it is actually in the law books. You can just grab it by the head and fuck its mouth. Jesus. Jesus. Bubba Bowie 
Bubba Bowie. <laughs> Bubba, <laughs> Bubba Bowie. <laughs> Obi, I'm not sure about the blue eye, blue eye, blue eye thing. Uh oh. Not sure. Why? Because there could be a parent with blue eyes and brown eyes, and they have a kid. Now, blue is a recessive, right? right? Gene. Okay. And brown is the dominant. All right. What? Of the uh, eye. But what? I said blue eye, blue eye. Yeah, but if both if parents blue brown, eyes, kid yeah. blue eyes. But if there's, if if the parents' parents, one of them has a brown eye, you could get that dominant. I'm sure one of them does. <laughs> I'm sure. Don't we all have a brown eye? <laughs> oh, stop you. Let's uh, let's go to let's go to Jeff in Jersey. Jeff, what's up? What's up, bro? I used to live next door to uh my. Backyard used to back up to a, a small person's house, and what happened was uh, they used to uh, go rake the leaves in the front, and I guess it was about a four foot wall. You wouldn't even see that; you just see the top of the rakes popping up and down. <laughs> <All> right, <Jesus. laughs> and the shovels. But here's the thing: they used. To, I swear to God, what they, they used, she had a daughter that was a, a beauty. Her, she was gorgeous. I mean, drop dead gorgeous, and it was her daughter. They used to actually looked like her, but the thing was. Uh, she was full size. She was about five eight. She was tall, even for a girl, and she was smoking. Yeah. I swear to God, swear to God. And here's another funny story. Uh oh. The, the woman came home from work one day, and it was dark in the backyard, and uh, some big uh, black dude tried to grab her purse, dragged her halfway up the uh, the driveway before he realized. I guess she was holding on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he had more to that, but that was it. Uh, that was it. Come on, that ain't funny. You know what? Hold on. I'm kind of with the guy. I don't think yeah. he should have got the car crash. Yeah, that's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, he didn't I realize that crash? she was still on the... Uh, uh, you got the car crash, but I'm defending you, bro. I think... I, think I'm just, I gave him the car crash more for the delivery. He <laughs> uh, just kind of ended it, and then went... Come on. Oh, he, he, I'm he, a electrician, you're not a comedian. There's nothing wrong with finding a little humor in your joke. The guy enjoyed his joke. <laughs> All right, thank you, buddy. All right. There goes right. there goes Jeff. Let's go to Tom in Texas. Tom, what's up? Not so much. I think you guys are missing the real point in the story. Okay. Okay, the point in the story is here's a three, six-foot-tall girl hopping on four-and-a-half-foot cock. I'm out. He's uh, talking about the, the black. black. Oh. <laughs> that deserved a crash. Dante. Yeah, what's up, Bone? Save this bitter. we got to move on. All right. Hey. Bob Kelly crying right now after reading that article. <laughs> Get out, Maverick. Good call back for the old listeners. Uh, Fucking faggot Dante. Well, I guess really fast, uh, Norton, uh, Bob Kelly, uh, one of his, well, well, he's a friend of all of ours, a comedian, and, and he's an emotional I found him. He's an emotional yes. wreck. And there was a program on HBO about dwarfs or midgets or something. It was just Bob is such a boob. I was in his apartment watching the midget special, and the one, the noise we always go there's a little one, and she was like three foot something. I mean, like she was she, the smallest midget I've ever seen on she, TV in real life or anything. If I met her in person, I would pick her up and bite her. Yeah, you have to. I would just sink my teeth into her mid back, <laughs> just bite her and hold her like that, <laughs> and <laughs> you just shake your head a little bit. <laughs> her little fat hands and feet would kick. Aww. Well, she got engaged to her boyfriend, and he like popped the question in front of her awful family. Yeah, and she and, and she was like. Aww. And she was trying to put her awful, tiny nailed fingers over her mouth, yeah. but they just kind of tapped the side of her little fat, awful face. Her arms were so short, uh. and her shoulders so wide apart <laughs> with that deformed body that she tried to, like any normal person would do, when you open up that, that engagement ring box and you see the ring, like she was trying to put her hands over her mouth and go, oh, like that. But her hands just barely, the tips of those nubs, barely brushed her cheeks. So she's trying, and her hands are shaking right on the side of her head, and she went, ooh, so happy that she's actually being accepted by somebody. Just just the love she was feeling, and I, I'm fucking, I'm howling. Of course. <laughs> at these awful hummingbird wing hands just fluttering and just touching nothing but a little bit of fat cheek. And I look over, and that fat Middle Eastern idiot is bawling like a, a baby. I want to crying over that. Dude, this is this I'm like, what oh the fuck is God. the matter with you? This is hilarious. Oh my God. You blubbering idiot. He he actually got emotional over that. Oh. It was the HBO dwarf special. I was crying too, but it was tears of laughter. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> Absolutely. Ooh. 
Hey, here's the first clip from the HBO Dwarf special. Oh, we got it. Six months later, we're Six finally playing later. this. Yeah. Old midget talking about how his parents wanted nothing to do with him. It shows him shirtless and shaving. Yeah, this is a... Uh, ooh. This was because they, they kind of highlighted a few midgets on the show and followed them through their daily activities. Some are doing very well, like the doctor. Others, not so good. This is why I go the other way and laugh openly at stuff. Yeah. Because you know damn well HBO is doing this dwarf special, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're talking to this old midget, which is dep sad to begin with. Yep. You just think about his life and how tough it was and blah, blah, blah. But HBO, it's not good enough for HBO or anyone else that's going to throw this special together. Right. So they're like, hey... Maybe it would be a good idea to film the dwarf, you know, with no shirt on, shaving. Yeah. Take your shirt off. Like, it's not bad enough. They want to make it as horrific as possible. Uh -huh. So then you, the stupid viewer at home, not you, I mean, the people that don't listen to the program, they're the yeah, stupid ones stupid that really, <laughs> you know, go with something like this and, and, and feel the emotion. Morons. Uh, you know, then you, then you, yeah, exactly. You feel the emotion and, and you're affected by yeah. something like this. But here's the old midget. He looked just like an Oompa Loompa, by the way. He oh, was really? one of those midgets that like could have just put orange paint on his face and looked exactly like an Oompa Loompa. All right, let's go to the clip. When I was born, I was born different because I'm small. And what the doctor saw me born different, they said they didn't think I'd live beyond 10 years old because I was born different. This was 1941 I was born. A midget in 41. Ooh. My mother, she she was very scared, and she she didn't want to be ashamed to have me around with her. This picture here shows you when I went to the training school when I was five years old. I see all the kids have families. They, they come up to see them. They come up take them home. And I, I, I never had family do that. I am a dwarf, and they couldn't understand why I was born like this. Uh, music. Dramatic music. The dramatic music. Just in case you're not crying yet. Oh. Yeah, he was a real old midget. Yeah. Born in 41. And you know how tolerant people were in the 40s of stuff like that. Get it away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let it touch me. Yeah, keep it away. Better so known parents, as the good old days. <laughs> ah, the good old days. His parents um, abandoned him yeah. and uh, like sent him to this school for uh, kids like him. And he grew up and became some laborer at some um, bed and breakfast. And then what they do is actually bring him to his mom to introduce him to his mother again after all these years. So his mother's still alive. Do they? Oh, boy. Yeah. Is that oh. what's coming up on? I don't remember I don't that part. Know. I don't know if they had that. I'm just commenting. It was pretty gruesome. <laughs> Oof. It's called the good old days because back then you were allowed to react like a human being. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, everyone is, you know, so politically correct. And, and yeah. they try to tell you that you're not supposed to react when you see, like, you know, somebody that doesn't look like mm. you. You don't remember that part where he went to, like, meet no, up he with described his... No, he described a meeting with his mother where he had gone years later and she rejected him and told him to go away. But uh, he didn't. They didn't don't they show, show the apartment and everything. Yes, they but they don't her? show the mother. The mother might be. I think the mother's dead. They do show the. Um, oh, maybe I got confused because I saw the apartment. <clears throat> they showed like the apartment. Yeah, and he's going. And I went to visit my mother. You know, this awful voice, and he just sounds dumb. <laughs> At least the midget doctor is a doctor, but this guy just sounds yeah. like a dope. Back at 74. I found out where my mother lived oh, in yeah. New York. She lived in a very rich apartment. Apartment rich. And when I went to see her, I went up the third floor of Cena. And when I rang the doorbell, and when she saw... How did he ring the doorbell? Oh, you know, oh, how did he ring the doorbell? The stick. <laughs> <laughs> he asked the black guy holding the pizza to ring it for him. <laughs> Can you just ring this, please? <laughs> and when she saw me there, she was totally a shock. She says to me, Rob... 
What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be leaving Connecticut. You can't come here. I can't take care of you. <laughs> I don't think I was in your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> but ever since then, I have no use for the parents whatsoever. To me, they Likewise. were nothing. When they died a few years ago, I had no feelings whatsoever. Sorry to say that, but that's the way it is. He's like he's striking oh. back. They didn't care yeah. about you either, stupid. Yeah, exactly. Maybe if you weren't such a bad boy. Such a bad short boy. He went in 74. That means he was 33. Yeah. And his mother's like, I can't take care of you. You're not supposed to leave Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> she tells, where was that law? There's a law back then. Right. All midgets are to stay in Connecticut. <laughs> you know that she told him that when she left. Like, I don't want to have to leave you, but you can't leave Connecticut, and I have to. New law just being passed. All midgets are to stay in Connecticut. Connecticut, the land of the dwarf. Remember, if you're a genetic disaster and you give birth to one of these... Freaks with cocktail pranks for fingers, bring him to Connecticut. You'll get a free carton of Lucky Strike cigarettes. Now what would you rather have? The refreshing taste of a Lucky? Or some disaster screwing up your family photo? Of course, you'll take the Lucky. So drop off your mess in Connecticut and tell them they are not to leave under any circumstances. Dice, Dice had a really funny bit about fucking driving his car and hitting a midget, and the cop pulled him over. He's like, you hit a midget? He's like, oh, I thought it was a big bird. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I thought it was a big bird. <laughs> Dehumanizing just, him. Oh, you'll clean that up, right? Yeah, go ahead. No one saw it. <laughs> he don't care. A <laughs> big bird. <laughs> you hit a midget. <laughs> Why? Well, I thought it was a bird. What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Why? With my car. <laughs> that is funny. Oh, bravo. With their big fucking heads. <laughs> uh, All right, we got the woo girl uh, from the HBO Dwarf special, yeah. Anthony. This is the recap of uh, her childhood. Yeah. There were days when I went, uh. <laughs> Listen to that voice. She is like you put a human being in a trash compactor and she lived. Yeah, she's it's awful. just all like <laughs> compressed and that voice. How does she masturbate? Hmm. I bet she puts her face in the pillow and then just puts her awful torso on the bed and her little rotten legs together and just humps Think just like <laughs> a little like a chihuahua. Yeah. She probably wraps around a chair leg and just uh, humps her awful little humps crotch. Yeah, they can't reach their own crotches. No. How does she wipe her crack? Oh, yeah. How do they wipe their cheeks? It's got to be rough. Little midget ass stinking up the whole apartment. She probably does something where she bends <coughs> over, like, really far and gets her hand down there, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they take toilet paper and they put it around the plunger and then sit on it and stand quickly. Yeah, that could work. Use the stick they used to ring doorbells with. <laughs> Wipe some toilet paper on it. These are the questions we want answered if you want to do a is. special on this stuff. How do they do everyday things? Yeah. There were days when I was <laughs> I'm different. That's terrific. God, I wish That's I could terrific. be tall. Third grade. Wanted to be a cheerleader. <laughs> so and also wanted to play basketball. <laughs> play basketball or be a cheerleader. Yeah. Just pick two things that are impossible. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. What else did you want to do? Be on a string bean can, you deluded whore? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to be the, the Toys R Us mascot. <laughs> Come on. Jesus Christ. Why don't you just settle for... I just wanted to be something that people didn't want to throw up and kick when they saw... <laughs> I'm all for trying to be the. I'm all for trying to be the best you can be, but yeah. I mean, stop. Jeez, I just, I, There's I a million other things you could have done, and no one would have noticed. Nobody would have noticed the height thing. How about this? I just didn't want to be 30, looking like I belonged in diapers. Couldn't you have settled for that? Cheerleader, she wants to be, or play basketball. She could be the ball. That'd be interesting. <laughs> Whoa! 
Oh, team. Yuck. I'd lose oh. if shut her. I'd rather have the guys from the longest yard cheering for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that. Yes. My parents supported anything I wanted to do. My parents supported any ideas that I had. Of course. When Martha was born, there were doctors who would say, oh, she needs to be institutionalized. And then some doctor would walk around the corner and say, don't listen to them. That's not true. It's true. This baby has got all the potential in the world. You take her, you take her home, you love her, and you raise her, and, and it will all fall into place. I didn't know this girl's mother was Joaquin Phoenix. She said, don't you listen to those people. Don't you listen. There's no need to put her in an institution. She's got all the potential in the world. Just put makeup on her and run her out at parties. <laughs> Joaquin is uh, in rehab. Yes, he is. Your favorite actor is oh, in rehab. Oh, he's terrific. I have a problem with drugs. I have a problem with drugs. My fucking... I'm not lost. What? <laughs> I've been clean for 17 years. <laughs> I don't need to drink a drink or drug because I've got no acting ability to fall back on. <laughs> Joaquin Voss. My mother always supported her. Of course. All right, hold on. we got to go to Nicole in Atlanta. Oh, Nicole. Hey, guys. What's up? Listen, I heard you guys talking about um, how they wipe back there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know how. how. How? I used to work for this company, and that's all they did was provide, like, ways for paralyzed people, crippled people to go to the bathroom. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm and not what kidding. is it? Well, they make this special stick. It's curved. It's especially for wiping your ass if you're, like, really fat. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have arms long enough to reach back there. A you wipe wind the your toilet paper. Stick. Yes, you wind the toilet paper around one end of the stick. It's really curved. And I guess you stick it between your legs and just do your thing. What was the name of the company? You should have killed yourself incorporated? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't anything like that, but everybody there had a really good attitude about, you know, still being lucky to be alive. But they should call, sometimes they you should... did. No, sometimes you did think that, like, why didn't they over just now. kill themselves? <laughs> passed. No, what, they should what? Yeah, what, what should they have done, eh? I said they should get Panzerfaust, that they could buy one of their songs and have it uh, incorporated <laughs> to the product, product. You're paralyzed, use a shit stick! <laughs> <laughs> You're a fidget, use a shit stick! <laughs> <laughs> or a stick with toilet paper is not a hat. <laughs> All right, guys, well, I'm touching out. Right. Thanks right. for the info. Bye. I just, I just want to go fucking crazy with you. I just want to wipe your ass with a stick. Right. If you want that, just put your hands to your face and go, ooh. ooh. <laughs> you, are so, more her? you are so fucking short. <laughs> she was just short. the greatest kid you ever wanted to have. Oh, sure. She was feisty. Yeah. If that, it were just a matter of being short, that might have been one thing. But with diastrophic dwarfism, not only are their hands small, the joints are fused. Joints are plus fused. Plus the thumb floats. Floating she thumb. has no real grip at all. Floating thumb, people. And that has been the biggest challenge. To be an independent person was our goal with her. But there were always that handful of teachers who could not get beyond the fact that Martha was not the average no. child. Martha, she you can't do this. Clinches her hands. Don't even think about it. Well, Martha wouldn't accept that. We wouldn't accept that. She's got floating thumbs. She can't bend her thumbs, so she can't grip. She grips between her four fingers and the palm of her little hand is how she's got to grip. But most of the time, she grips with both hands. Like if she was going to drink something, she has to grab it with both hands flat and bring it up to her face because uh, her bones are all fused in her hand and she's got that floating thumb. You could take the thumb and just, it's like a bobblehead thumb. It's not attached to anything. It's just kind of, so when she was going, ooh, it was, they were shaking around. Her little thumbs were shaking. <laughs> what a disaster. How short were her arms? Uh, T-Rex. Think T-Rex. Come on. She had these little T-Rex arms. Yeah. It, it's as if take your your arm from the elbow and attach it to your shoulder. Wow, that's what she had going. Yeah, 
Little things like that. Everyone's trying it. And she did that wiggle walk thing where the legs are just such a mess that you're, you know, you're going back and forth when you walk. She wasn't even hot. She had a long, fat, wide yeah. face. Yeah. And really the boyfriend's a, a midget, too? Yeah, but he was a taller midget. He was tall for a midget. Midgets look at him and go, wow, you're pretty tall. What was that, four just, or five? Yeah, he just fit into midget category. And there she, they were, like in the kitchen. She's cooking. She like, has to climb a ladder no matter what she's trying to get to. It's like the ladder goes around. She climbs up it. He's got to run around and get her stuff from places that are too high. And he liked the fact that she depended on him. Like That was one of the things. Because nobody else ever looked at this guy for anything in his life no. other than a good, yeah, a good place why. to he slap. Like, Great. Now I'm the big man on campus. That's exactly what it is. He'd hand her little things that she couldn't get out of the yeah. drawer. After know. she cooks, it must look like a crime scene every night. Think she's messy? Oh my! How how could you not be? How how is she cleaning With those up? Hands? I don't know. I imagine you go go over there to eat and know she's been handling the food. Yeah, little fat Mickey Mouse hands. Check the spaghetti. And she just digs her hands in there. Oh, here you go. Here's uh. Oh, yeah, a pinch of salt. She's got to put it between her palms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you're just looking like oh. Oh, have some cake. Oh, I got my fingers in it. That's okay. But no one wants to say anything. Assume, I love when people assume they can just maul your food. And then get, a couple of times you get in room service at the hotel, mm -hmm. and these, like, animals will come and deliver your food for you from some faraway country. And they wheel it up, and, and they insist on taking the tops off of the food. And sometimes they grab in through that hole in the, the, the top of the metal thing over your plate. Yep. And, and put up a finger mark in your mashed potatoes. Yes, Howard. You know what Hughes. I got to do? Throw it away. Yes, Howard Hughes. We all can relate it's to that. It's not a Howard Hughes thing. It's an animal's finger. Why are you in my mashed potatoes? You're throwing way too much shit away. Yeah, Miss Fancy. What happened? Uh, you didn't tell them to bring it to the other room of the suite? Their fingers brushed your potatoes in your room you, service? Okay. Why, wouldn't you, why wouldn't you at that point? Some filthy beast this, this that probably why, doesn't wipe. This is why I'm starting to think paper. you're more and more like Howard Hughes every why? day. Why? Okay, I understand the dilemma to a point. All right, so yeah. now you got a, a, a print in your mashed potatoes, yeah. let's say. Why wouldn't you at that point maybe take a utensil and just scrape that part right. off the mashed potatoes and get rid of it when if I've, you're that paranoid? When I've been hungry, Why I, would you throw the whole that. thing away? No, I have done that. I've scraped it off, but I scrape a lot off. It's just, well, The point is not how crazy I am. The point is the, the oh, guy no, should watch out. no, it's about how crazy you are. No, he We're going to have a whole show on that yeah. soon when you're feeling it. He should, be, <laughs> he should understand I don't want his fingers in my food. And why are you now broadcasting from a, a plastic bubble? There are germs in here. <laughs> I have to. I, but I roll in and out. It's not taking up too much studio room, the bubble. Hey, John Travolta, you're going to risk it all and take a walk outside to I, smell I'm the gonna, spring air? I'm going to go outside. <laughs> I, I'm in my bubble. <laughs> Boy, in a plastic bubble. What an that ass. That was his big dramatic role. <laughs> right. Look, I'm in a bubble. Wasn't that the, the final scene where he's going to take a chance and live? And yeah. then he walks outside? Yep. Out of his uh, safe environment? I think, no, they put him in a walking suit. Didn't they put him in, like, a space suit? Yeah, At yeah, first. yeah. And he was able to walk around? At first, but then he realizes he needs to truly live, I believe. Yeah. That was the dramatic uh, moment. Then he's walking without any protection. I'm Mr. Carter, I'm getting out of my bubble. And, and then he, what happened? He took a walk? What happened, yeah. I think that's how it ends, knowing that it's oh. probably not going to oh, turn out too good. that cold. Probably yeah. some dirty Asian sneezed in his face. <laughs> Give him the SIDS. <laughs> the SIDS? Or the, what is it called? Yeah, <laughs> some infant death syndrome. Yes. I didn't know yeah. SIDS was contagious. Hey, look, you got to put John to sleep on his back. SIDS. <laughs> 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 what a tool. Uh, uh, yeah. How do you think he uh, caught that fatal disease? Could have been mm. a bird just pooping on his head as he's trying to enjoy his day in the backyard. Yeah, where did that germ come from? <laughs> right, Probably one. some animal room service guy putting his finger in his mashed potatoes. <laughs> that one little germ that ended it all. All right, back to the, uh, the ooh oh, girl. Yeah. Uh, this clip is about her saying she'll never be a model. I am three feet tall, and that is one of the shorter little people. If I could wave a magic wand, I would not wave it to be tall. Oh, How no? My experiences have been extremely unique because of my height. Uh, stop taking lemons and making lemonade, you yeah. little liar. If yeah. I had a magic wand in a second. That's right. Either that or wave it so everyone in the world is even shorter than you. So yeah. you can make fun of ah, see you, motherfucker. If I had a magic wand, I'd just smack her in the face with it and go, ha-ha.
That's such the courageous thing to say, though. Bullshit. You know? I, it is yeah. bullshit. I wouldn't change a thing. If I had a magic wand, I'd wave it, and I'd have washboard abs and a great chin, and I'd never need to do comedy because I'd just be getting blown all the time. I would change everything. <laughs> Fucking liar. Wave that magic wand, and I wouldn't change a thing. And you yeah. think they're uh, off to the side just going, you go, girl. Yeah. You tell them. You That's tell courage. HBO. People are going to see your story and be inspired. Ugh. Yeah, to buy condoms so you don't have that <laughs> fucking awful atrocity running around your living room. I think he, uh, John Travolta, uh, it says, I think he walked out on his own and rode a horse with his girlfriend. That's right. Was oh. that it? Yeah, because horses Big aren't that when dirty. When he goes horseback right. riding and jumps a fence, that's it. That's I hear he's hooking up with Dreamweaver by the riverbed. <laughs> that's real smart. You're going to take a chance. Uh, maybe the first thing isn't jumping on a horse. You know what I mean? That's maybe right. you should just start with a, just a, a an walk around the house. Yeah, yeah, an enjoyable walk around the yard, praying that nothing poops on you. <laughs> Why are you jumping on a horse? That's right, through the woods where there's deer ticks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look at this guy trying to get me. Hey, Ann, I work on ATM machines, and I watch people insert their card, pick their nose, punch their PIN numbers in, and uh, then you use the machines. Yeah, I do. I know. What am I going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? If I see it, you know, that's, that's when I get really crazy. That's when you can totally put the lunatic label on me, is the stuff that I start doing that I don't see. That could be dirty. Well, um, Jason from Alabama wants in, Anthony. Mm -hmm. He knows how midgets wipe their butts. Alabama. Let's go to Jason. Hey, Jason. Hey, how are we doing, guys? What's up, Jay? Hey, going back to that whole uh, ass-wiping concept, I think they just drag themselves across the carpet like a dog. <laughs> You think they, their legs go up by their ears and they just kind of pull themselves around with their hands? I love it's it. called scooting, actually, when dogs do that. Scooting. Right. Toolbag Johnson from New Orleans. Uh, if I had a magic wand, I'd put some toilet tissue on it and wipe my ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a very sympathetic audience. Mm -hmm. Back to the uh, clip. Because of my height. Uh -huh. Great audio. I see everything, but I don't really care anymore. Cutting these dead spots out. Who who did this? I don't know. What did we learn on this show? Editing. Well, no, we haven't learned that yet. Someday we'll learn editing. Although yeah. this is uh, something that was put together about six months ago for us. So Yeah, maybe they've learned since then. Sure. Who put it together? Who would leave these just blank... Moments of noise, background noise. Knowing, well, that's the visual. I'm sure she's walking around. Yeah, the around, visual's probably great right there. Walking around Manhattan, looking at it, all the tall buildings and yeah. the tall people. Everything taller than her. Sure. But on radio, I got to kind of use words. Yeah, people are just sitting there going, what is this? But, oh, what? what is it? Eric? Did you, Eric? Did you edit this, Eric? No. Wow, they're, they're Be honest. They just threw you under the bus. you out. Steve. Who edited this? Wait, let me explain what happened. We get little little messages in our headphones uh -huh. every once in a while. Yep. And the other room that's filled with all the interns go just threw Eric under the bus and said, Eric, uh, put this whole thing together. Steve, Martinez. I didn't Steve? even know you were here today. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm feeling, I'm, I, got, I think I'm... Uh -huh. What happened? That stupid microphone. What happened? I got, I got allergies or something. What? Yeah, hold it up, Steve. What are you doing? God, stupid thing! Just, just uh -huh, he there. knocks the cover off it. <laughs> Put it Sorry. back. Are you all right? Uh, I got. I, I think I'm having some allergy attack or something like that. Wow, you puffy. sound great. Yeah, what I don't are you know. allergic I, to editing? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. If I actually ended this in, I would have laughed at that, but it's oh, not mine. Did. Yeah, I didn't do this. Who did this? I don't know. I, I don't know. I know Eric pulled a piece, but I know I pulled a piece, but this isn't the one I did. Oh. So. Uh, the fairy fucking godmother edited yeah. it. Oh, dude, I, I take credit for wow. all my screw ups. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, I didn't do this editor. One. All right, well. Who edited this piece? Who the fuck edited this piece? <laughs> They're paying for it. You listen to it. <laughs> Steve, thanks for adding to the program today. <laughs> you called me in here. <laughs> it's allergic, Steve. God, <laughs> yeah, you ain't kidding me. Look at your eyes, man. They're all puffy. Yeah, I'm allergic to something. I don't know what, though. Mm. So I'm just walking around wondering why I feel like crap. I have a million yeah, Exactly. Ass. I have a million things you could be uh, allergic to, oh. but I'll just stop right there. Yes, just leave that That's in right. your head, Opie. Because we're going on Hops too many... yeast, maybe. We're going on too many <laughs> tangents as is. So uh, I backed up a little bit here, Anthony, because what we learned on this program is as yeah. soon as you say you don't care about something, you really do care. Right. And she's saying how she doesn't care about being tall. She doesn't care. What? I 
have accepted that I am not going to be a model. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, God. Oh. She's accepted that. Did, don't you have to <laughs> have it run through your head for a second before you can accept something? We all go through life, probably, uh, I don't know, sophomore. Sophomore year, I think it starts, and they give yeah. you that thing, what you might be good at. Uh-huh. There's things you, 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 you're just not checking off. Right. At all. You're not even uh, considering Why it. are you checking off the, the, the one that says model? Model. Might be a good uh, career direction for you. Why? Model. Yeah. Well, she's accepted that. That's, that's brave. She's right. so obsessed with being short that she wants to prove everybody wrong. So she's going for things that, that uh, dwarfs and midgets don't go after. Right. Uh, being models. Being a cheerleader, basketball player, basketball, basketball. player. Mm -hmm. she's got some mental issues. Oh, be a scrubbing bubble. Or anything thereof. <laughs> I have accepted that I don't even look as attractive as some other people, even in the same position that I'm in. But I don't care. You're ugly. I don't care. She doesn't care. I just don't care. She doesn't care, guys. Don't go over, I don't care. Doesn't care. I don't care. I don't care. I honestly don't care. Don't I, care. I know, Howard. You don't care. I don't care. She's ugly. Really? She couldn't even say ugly. She had to say, I'm not as attractive as other people in the same position. Just say it. Mm -hmm. You're homely. Now, this, uh, this girl was a teacher, Anthony? Yes. She'd walk in, and these poor students would have to uh, deal with that on a daily basis. What, what did she teach? How distracting. I don't remember. Was it art class? Some, some meaningless class. It was <laughs> some meaningless class. You're right. What's wrong, Jimmy? Same thing as last. I can't fucking He's hear. He's having problems with the, uh, the sound quality. Is there any way to turn up your headphone volume? No, it's not that. It's, 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 it's an underwater thing. I, don't wanna, I know the listeners are annoyed we bitch, but I can't hear. I'm talking to you. It sounds awful. So you like how that mic sounds. You yeah. don't want to move over there, Probably because right? they put the filter back in here or something. You don't want to move over there? Okay, so so someone has to talk to uh, Wiki, All right. and that's not a speech Wiki. impediment. That's his nickname, with a W. Ooh. Um, and just make that microphone your microphone. Over yeah, there. I don't know why this sounds a lot... Uh, a that little... sounds perfect. That sounds great. Guys, a little show idea. The Norwegian Dawn is arriving in New York. I'm sure that there will be uh, lots of news coverage down at the uh, pier here in Manhattan. Yeah, on the west lots side. Lots of news coverage, lots of live shots, lots of interviews with these people down there. you got to go down there, people. If you're in New York, uh, assault on the media, you get in front of those cameras, hold up wows or something, uh, you, you, you bring in your clip. You know, you have a friend at home record it or something, get some kind of proof, even digital camera of you doing it. Uh, you, we'll give you something. We'll toss you something. You come down, sit in on the show and hang out. Yeah. But uh, this is a perfect opportunity. This story's Huge. The ship, they just showed a live shot of it coming up the river. So um, the, here comes your opportunity. It's a great opportunity. We'll get into that story in a little bit. Oh, it, I it's, can't wait. It's another great, great story. Yes, Jimmy? Well, why don't we have anybody going down? Do we have anybody here that can go down with a sign? It's a beautiful day out. We really should. Well, I don't know when should, it's exactly Yeah, someone's got to uh, let us know when the ship's going to you know, come in and they're going to start doing their live reports from down there. Probably the noon uh, news here in New York. Probably, yeah. What's this coming in? Is it coming in right now? Uh, it, they just showed a live shot of it uh, coming up the river. So Maybe someone can help us out with that because we're, we're just looking at the pictures uh, on the TV. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know the details <laughs> of that. All right, so uh, the ooh girl talking about her job as a teacher. I teach in a public middle school. It's actually at-risk kids. Criminals. The first week, they're petrified. They have no idea how to react. The they either stare or they look somewhere else the whole time. Maybe they're showing her class. And if I'm turned, I know that they're, they're looking at me really hard. And so it was a couple of midgets that live in, my, live in my neighborhood. So I was kind of used to it. And I heard all the stories about it and all that stuff. So when I came to sixth grade, I was expecting to see the, mid, the um, little person. <laughs> see, he's he's been mm. trained. Yeah, it's not a midget; it's a little person. It's a little person. The little people. The little person. 
Is this a school in Connecticut, by the way? <laughs> yeah, they keep them in Conne- <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> I tell them the correct term is a little person or a dwarf. Um, the common term is... It's also a midget. Why is dwarf okay but midget not? A midget. They pick and choose, and it has to be of their own choosing. That gives them empowerment. Like if you say midget, they go, no, dwarf. Why? Because right. I said so. It gives them some little power base. That you shouldn't call them this, just call them this. Why Why is one acceptable and the other isn't? I don't know. They made up those those rules in Connecticut. And why is midget a bad term? Do you have an idea, know. Kev? You're leaning midget forward sounds, eagerly. Midget sounds nice. I hate when they roll up you know, with each other and they're like, yo, midget, what's up? And if you call them midget, they get really upset. <laughs> <laughs> that actually did just... It actually, that was funnier than the laugh at God. That was I didn't want to laugh. A funny line. But I didn't know where he was going at first, and then that that wasn't that bad. Here's, I, here's I why take I take back my obnoxious laugh. That was funny. That was a funny I'm, line. I'm sorry, Big Kev. But it was worth it, though, just to see Big Kev leaning in, hands on console, and then backing up to obnoxious laugh and a car crash. Yeah. But it was funnier than it But he had a lot of confidence, you he see? Did. Oh, he, he did. He came forward with a lot of confidence. <laughs> All right. Yo, Midget, what's up, man? Yo. Um, as you probably know, it's the M word. Now I'll go, yeah. M word. And But I don't like that because it has a negative connotation. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it has a negative connotation just like the N word. Uh, oh, yeah, word? really? What word is she talking about? Migger? <laughs> <laughs> the N word. The N word. What are we, fucking children? Just because yeah. you're shorter than most of them, there's no reason to talk like one. You fucking language changing little nothing why should we change the way we talk just because you have to shop like Louis De Palma in the little children's section while the corduroys go (laughs) (laughs) Uh, she from New York is saying what does she teach shorthand (laughs) alright we have two more clips the M word I mean N word the word nigger is it is associated with slavery and a horrible repression of, of a group of people for centuries. I mean, and they just were never forced to, to do labor they didn't want to do. But even that word is now a joke. It is a joke because it's used too much in the black community right. to make it a bad word. Right. Sorry. Yeah. It's used all the time in the black community. If all of a sudden they stopped using it and everyone stopped using it, it would become one of those words that uh, just aren't used anymore. Right. Sort of like, um, I don't know. Like a 23 skidoo. They already dumbed down that word. Hubba hubba. It doesn't have the power it used to have. No. It doesn't. If you're walking around and every other word is that word in your community, then... Mm-hmm. It isn't mine. What is that? Then... Wow, he talks real loud. All right, here's the boyfriend of the... What the, the hell? Why were we hearing that? Why were we hearing that? Were you just talking real loud, Ben? Who, who were you talking to? We heard you through the door, which is weird. That was I weird. Thought I heard him. I heard him through my headphones. That's yeah. what I thought, too. Who were you Maybe talking that door's to? door's open. Are you kidding? No, I was talking to Don down in Washington about Jim's mic problem. Oh, oh okay. Is that good. Don on the phone? Is that Don on the phone? We're going to fix it, by Where the way. Where are those Jeff. pictures I was supposed to see? All right, here's the deal. So now we're up to the boyfriend of the, the, the little midget girl. Yeah. And then the final track is the marriage proposal that people have been waiting for. I just fell in love with the, the woman that was inside her. And okay, the package tiny that... Tiny little it, woman. That is bullshit. That is bullshit. Ooh, that really? That is bullshit. This is how it works. Uh-huh. Let me tell you how it works, people. Oh, right. Every single person out there, I don't care who you are, you first, uh, I, I don't want to use the word fall in love, but you're attracted to a face. Mm-hmm. You are attracted to the, a face, whatever that might be. You might like a blonde with blue eyes. You might, make, um, you might like, an Asian, uh, like an Asian woman, whatever. Then, when you get to know that person, you hope they are, they're also cool inside and have the good heart and all, that, all those other qualities sure. that you're looking for. But these people that say they fall in love, you know... Without without the physical attraction, they're lying to themselves. The woman inside. They're lying. Yeah. I don't know how. Well, they... just like all, all other animals on this on this planet, you mm-hmm. look at a, a, a physical feature first. Right. Whatever that whatever that is that you're looking, maybe you like a nice ass, and that attraction to the person at first. Then you hope they have all the other other qualities mm-hmm. that aren't physical. Maybe like a girl that when she takes her clothes off, it looks like uh, I don't know a, a turkey sitting in a pan waiting to go in for a Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Don't you just picture her looking exactly like a turkey, <laughs> naked? <laughs> like the disproportioned bulky body thing, and the fat joints by the legs. And the legs just stick straight out because yeah. it's just so awful. Oh, Rotten hole wide open. Oh, little wings sticking out. <laughs> 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 
I just fell in love with the, the woman that was inside her. And the package that it happens to be carried around in means very little. Oh, really? Martha is the first girl that I've dated in my entire life ah. who's smaller than me. There you go. We have a winner. Well, you said who is smaller than me. Oh, that is smaller? I think he could have stopped the first woman he's dated in his life. Man, and, and how cruel are the parents? Hmm. You have a midget uh, daughter and you name her Martha? Martha the midget. Wasn't that name retired back in 19... Mm, no, no. Uh, Martha. I think they retired the name Martha back in 19... Uh, let me do my math. Uh, 1965, that name 65, was... 65, you yeah. think, Martha? That name was retired, Anthony. Not as old as Gertrude. Gertie. Well, look on... Uh, look that at, goes back to, like, Look at the, the list of all the names that have been retired. Yeah. You don't name your kid Martha. Martha. And I'm assuming this uh, this midget's not that old, right? Mm-hmm. 20-something, maybe? Yeah, yeah. So she was born in the 80s? Is that safe yeah. to say? Who okay. the hell is naming their kid Martha in the 80s? Martha. We'll call her Martha. And anything with an M is bad. Because then you just call the midget. Martha the midget. But then again, a T is bad. Tanya Twerp. Danielle Dwarf. You know? Yeah. And you're not going to give her a stripper name with uh, you know, that body. Tiffany Tiny? It was good. That <laughs> <laughs> Summer? Yeah. Sandy Small? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Chandra Short? <laughs> Oh, Penelope Pipsqueak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Donna Diminutive. Have we talked? Have we ever talked about the saddest day on the Opie and Anthony program? What? The saddest day? Uh, I remember. Not the firing. Those fired? No. Those are always sad. But an actual show we did where? Oh, I do. Yeah, I remember. Where Anthony and I pretty much broke out of our characters and we're like, oh god, this is not right. Yeah. You remember? Yeah, it was Big Kev remembers? It was an awful Oh, because we'll plow through this shit every day. We don't care if you run out of the studio crying. We don't care, as long as it makes good radio. Uh Uh-oh, I said we don't care, which means I I, I don't care. But But for the most part, yeah, we'll just plow through. If you're going to cry and run out, oh, well. It made for great radio. But we, uh, someone called us up and said that this girl wanted to come in. Remember this one, uh, Ben? The midget stripper? We needed a midget stripper because somebody <laughs> had a uh, fetish. A, a guest had a fetish. Who was that? I can't remember. Some rock guy. He was a rock dude. Yeah, I don't know. And his fetish was to see a midget one dance of the, naked. One of the listeners will get it. Who was that? Our fans know more about this show than... It wasn't Barry Williams, was we it? Do. No, no, no. 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 I don't remember. Who the hell was it? I don't know. They wanted to see a, a naked midget next time they were in the studio. Right. So we, we were like, okay, we'll accommodate. So we tried to audition them, and they were really hard to come up with. Right. So this, uh, we get this call from this girl. She's, she says she'll come in and strip. And she was a midget. Or was she a dwarf? She was uh, I think, uh, a dwarf. I think she was more dwarfish. She had that dwarf thing going. So uh, she comes in, and she's very, very, very sad. Mm-hmm. Sad eyes and everything. But we're not thinking much about it. We're like, ah, she's, she strips. Yeah. She'll strip for us. So she gets up on the the, con- the console. Yeah. And we I think we threw some music on for her and she starts she starts <laughs> makes it sexy. <laughs> she starts stripping and uh next thing you know like little tears are starting to well up yeah. in her eyes. Cuz we're just roaring. We're like, "Oh my god." Jack Black. Was it Jack Black? Jack Black? Jack Was it Jack Black? Yeah. Wait, we got the description? And Colin, uh, Jack Black and Hanks. Colin Hanks. Uh, let's see. Perverts. Description of this download. This is from foundrymusic.com. Maybe Steve will will uh, headline this today. Okay, well, Nicole Starr isn't quite naked in this video, but as we can see, she is bright, well-spoken, outgoing, and quite personable. Watch as she mingles effortlessly with Patrice, Jack Black, and Colin Hanks. Colin mm. Hanks, the son of Tom Hanks. Tom yes. Hanks, yes. Uh... Well, okay, so she was stripping in front of all these people, and all of a sudden the tears start welling up in her eyes, and it turns out she never stripped before. No. I don't know what she was doing there on that day. She wanted to become a stripper and thought this was a good idea. She'll start on our program. And I think we pretty much, like, stopped the bit. We're like, oh, God. Yeah, because she was just not uh, into it. Started crying. <clears throat> Is that her? No, that was some other... Oh, I thought that was Crystal pictures. Storm meets the midget. That's another... Uh, 
That was another one of our midget friends. Nick, right there, bro. Nicole Starr. The Remember she midget. was standing up on the counter? Some people are saying around it was Dennis console. Leary. Huh? Some people are saying it was Dennis Leary that wanted the midget. No. What? Let me see. Huh? She was what? She was standing up on the console and walking around the console. Yeah, she didn't even have to duck. Like yeah. any any of the girls we've ever had dance on the console, they've had to like <clears throat> crouch down. Right. Take their clothes off and crouch down. She was standing up. She could have been on a trampoline. I got another description. <laughs> I got another description from FoundryMusic.com. Some of these will will be uh, made headlines later today, probably. Okay, I got the midget up on the console, and you think getting her to take her top off would be fairly simple? No, it must have taken Aunt ten minutes to explain. That's what we wanted to see. But then we realized she just she she just never did this before. Nope. Was uncomfortable, and then she started crying. Mm. And for once, Aunt and I felt really, yeah. really like canceled scum- a bit, like scumbags. Bit canceled. We canceled it, right, Steve? Bit I, off. I, 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 I think she got naked, then it was uh, topless. Uh, yeah, for I a don't second. think she really wanted to be there. To be honest with you, it was you. hard to get her up on the console. She had her head down and her arms to her side the whole time. She's just like moping. Yeah, oh, I yeah she wasn't into it. What, uh, what a mood kill! Yeah, it was, <laughs> stupid it, midget. Oh, it was really sad. We thought we were going to have a lot of fun, a great day of radio, and it just turned out to be a disaster. Exactly. So here's more of the boyfriend talking about his uh, midget girlfriend, and then finally the proposal. We morning. I am four foot ten, and have been since I was in high school. (laughs) I'm not a little person. By their categories, I'm average size. It's very refreshing to be asked to get something off a shelf because she can't reach it. That's it. And it does give me that, that warm, fuzzy feeling inside that I can be her man. Ugh. Oh, my God. That's your idea of being a man? How about pumping a load into her dumper? <laughs> he wants to get down canned peas, oh. dummy. That's not what being a man is. How about blackening her eye? That's what being a man is. <laughs> oh. How do they lay there in bed and do that? Ugh. Like, she would just be in his belly. Like, her face is in yeah. his belly as he's d- doing her. <laughs> Rotten thumbs just tickling his sides. Oh. Yeah. Can't even reach down and tickle the bag. Nothing. Or she could. She could probably just flick her thumb and it goes, <laughs> and flaps on it. <laughs> <laughs> you have milk today, by the way? Yeah. Okay, good. He's lactating, yes. Uh, let's see. All right, so here it is, finally, the uh, the marriage proposal. All right. So the dude, 410, proposes to midget lady. Yeah, right in front of her parents, who were just pleased as punch that anyone accepted this uh, freak. And she wanted to touch her face, but she couldn't? Yeah. That's where the whole... Yeah, she you tried to cover visual. her mouth and go, <gasps> oh, she tried to do that, like oh, okay. any, anybody who's surprised at an engagement would, but her arms are so short, she went to hold them up to her mouth and d- didn't even barely brush her cheeks with the tip of her fingers. Just touching them. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. May not be normal birthday kind of stuff. Oh, man. Birthday present. It's an engagement ring. Surprise. Oh, <gasps> Oh, oh my, my God. God! But will you marry me? Oh my God! Oh my God. <laughs> 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 and that's when Bob Kelly lost it. <laughs> right there. Ugh. <laughs> 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 The ring was a washer from an eyeglass screw. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Can you hear her awful acceptance again? That this that one part. Yeah, I gotta hear her crying. <laughs> wait, the yes or wait? Just the yes. Yeah, the whole thing. Uh, you wanna hear the whole thing again? I like hearing her cry. Like, yeah. All right, we'll go back. We'll go back. Here we go. Come on. May not be normal. Birthday kind of stuff. Oh man. Mm. <gasps> oh, oh my god. My god. Well, will you marry me? Oh my god. Sounds like an infant. 
Doesn't it just sound like an infant crying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How awful. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then right after she goes, he goes, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> and she hugs him, and her hands only come to his shoulders. Yeah. She goes to hug him, and those little hands barely even reach his, his shoulders. shoulders. Just wants to be a man. Yeah. I think we hear her. Ooh. Hey, oh, yeah, you did. Sounds like the power steering pump straining. Stop it. Stop it. Oh my god. That's what your parents said when you came out. (laughs) Oh my god. Exactly. 18 still in a bassinet. See too many dreams come true. <laughs> it was really so unbelievable that she'd ever be able to do half of what she's done. That to sit here tonight and watch her accept that ring is the absolute best. I hope he's beats her. Oh, I hope he's a horrible little <laughs> husband. <laughs> Can you kiss him or? <laughs> Go ahead, be a midget like your father. <laughs> clean it up, you guinea twerp. <laughs> now clean it up. There you have Go it. show Carlo the fern. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, there you have it. Ed. Her little awful wedding dress. Knocking the little teacups <laughs> off of the little Susie Bake oven in anger. <laughs> Uh, that's great. All right, well, I hope she lives uh, happily ever after. That's nice. Did we just talk for like an hour and a half straight? Oh, you've been out for a long time. Oh, my God. Yeah. I say take a break. Take a, All right, we'll take, take a break. break. Now, you, you look very boyish today, ever since you cut your hair. Ben, ben got, got a haircut. haircut. Thanks, Jim. That looks very nice, right. Ben. Thank you. You were awesome. definitely, we saw, um, uh, I was watching The Shining yesterday, the end of The Shining, and, of course, if you're going through the channels it comes on, you have to watch it. And i got to say, Jack's hairstyle in The Shining was exactly what you were sporting yeah, there, Ben, for a little while. Long. And when he had that Ben has that black turtleneck, he looked exactly like Nicholson. It should have yeah. just said Tuesday, Tuesday, right after Ben. <laughs> so speaking of Bob Kelly, Bob injured. Bob was supposed to call in. Bob injured himself yesterday and is all hopped up on medication. We can get him on the phone. Oh, we got He's with Dan Cook on the tour bus, and Dan called saying that Bob's all whacked out. How did he injure himself? I, he hurt his leg somehow. I talked to him yesterday. This is before He must have got injured be- sometime yesterday afternoon. Oh, let's get Bob Kelly on the phone. We can do that after the break. All right, let's do that after the break because we finally played the HBO uh, uh, Dwarf uh, yes. special. So Finally so, out of the way. So Bob, Bob. Bob will have some comments because he actually <laughs> cried. He cried when she uh, started crying. Yeah. He Yay! wept like some grandmother. <laughs> We also have Sean Rouse outside the studio who warmed up for, for Jim Norton in Atlantic City. Ooh. I'm a little bummed out that the crowd didn't, uh, you know, give your openers a chance because, you, you know, I mean, Sean Rouse especially, a very, very funny the guy. Are and animals. he still kicked ass because he just uh, blew off his act and just attacked the crowd. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, these guys, <laughs> they think they're being funny and they, 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 you know, they're interrupting these comedy shows. It's like, man, just shut up. They dude. think it's, yeah. Well, I, mean, I think it's like a live radio show where they it's can like just a, blurt shit out. A comment here and there is fine, but over and over again, you're really just, you know, I don't know. Monster Rain! Yeah. They do uh, it to Chappelle, too. I mean, I heard Chappelle walks off now. Like, like really? like Rick James, it's like, all right. It's like, I understand once in a while you're going to yell something, but the problem is some of these guys are really smart, but some of them have awful timing. It's yeah. like, do you realize I'm going... One, two, and and just before three, they'll yell like you know, little Connor. Yeah. It's like you no timing motherfucker. Could you yeah. shut up? Right after the setup, you're ready to go into the uh, punchline yeah. of it, and uh, there's some idiot just blurting something out. Sean handled him. I gotta tell you, you know when we yeah, had like them. when we had that two years off there, and I, I was just wandering around America, seeing comedy and just doing stupid shit. I walked to Earth. I walked to Earth. Um, my favorite guy that I 
not that I discovered them, but the, in Ooh. my in my life, the, you know, Sean Rouse. Oh my God, yeah, love the guy. Absolutely love the guy. He's sick and twisted. He's not supposed to drink because he's got all sorts of fucked up things wrong with him, and he yeah, and he just drinks like like worse than Martini Steve. Wow. And then you see him in the lobby of these hotels the next morning. He can't even move. Yeah. Really. And he knows what he's doing to himself. He don't give a crap. Oh boy. He is dark and twisted. He's got the dexterity of a redwood. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the time in Dallas? Oh, Sean's a mess. He's got, uh, I, 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 you're going to laugh at me because I don't know if I can pronounce it right, the, the rheumatoid arthritis, is that it? I right? think so. And so uh, he's got like he's got like knobby like elbows and all all sorts of things wrong with him that really? he openly talks about on stage. So I'm yeah. not, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, trying to poke fun at the guy. And then uh, we we meet him, or I guess, did you know him ahead? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So I meet him for the first time, and he's talking about this very normal and stuff, and he's like, yeah, I'm not supposed to drink, whatever. It does really bad things. And now the show's over, and we're all just hanging, partying and stuff, and he's just pounding, man. Wow. Just pounding. Eek. So the next day, we're at this awful, greasy joint to get breakfast, and and uh, I'm sitting with Jimmy, and I'm like, where's Sean? And he comes into the into the restaurant. Like he, like he said, the guy can't even move. It, it was painful oh, to watch the guy, and he basically tough. sits down. And it, it, even just sitting down, he's like, Ugh. like it, even just sitting hurt. And then he's like eating his food, but he could barely move his arms to get the food in his mouth because he's just beating the shit out of his body. Well, go ahead. I was tried driving home from Atlantic City with him yesterday, and he's, he's his leg is all messed up because it's swollen his knee. So he keeps hitting it to like get the circulation <laughs> oh moving. Oh my god! <laughs> there he is. Oh, he's a mess. He's limping, limping around our uh, <laughs> our offices right now as we speak. Uh, so hitting that leg to wake it up. Oh. But but besides all that crap, man, the stuff he does on stage, I absolutely love this guy. Yeah, love this guy. I don't know what kind of radio he can do. Well, oh, he's funny. We've done Dallas together. Okay, we'll done. have him sit in and we'll see what happens. So Sean Rouse is on the program next. Just remember, get into plain food. That's always a good one. <laughs> Uh, Bob Kelly calling in and uh, Chris Jericho stopping on by. Yes. Now, one other show announcement. Pat from Munaki has entered the hot dog eating contest. The, the Nathan's hot dog wow, eating contest at Coney, at Coney Island. Island? Yeah. Did he really? Yeah, he's, he's got to go through the trials here. He just emailed me. But, yeah, it starts in Hartford, Connecticut and goes on. But. There are trials you have to go through, like yeah. real athletes? But he says he lost 30 pounds since the uh, eggnog contest and he's ready to eat hot dogs. What he's going to wear an Opie and Anthony shirt. off. Yeah, yeah they lose 30 pounds. These food eating uh, competitions are, the, it's the real deal. The, the, I'm serious. They take it very, uh, I'm serious. Yeah. They take it very seriously. Isn't it some little Asian guy that usually wins that one? Yeah, it's yeah. a short little Asian yeah, he guy. Yeah, weigh, he, he weighs yeah. like a buck 25, something like that, buck 30. He's, he weighs nothing. And he usually wins uh, year after year. Ugh, nice Asian hot dog dump. That's got to smell lovely. 